Father God, we thank you for yet another day like this. It is by your grace and through the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord, we are able to gather here this morning before your presence. Lord, we might present ourselves to you as your children, you as our Lord and our God. We therefore pray and ask, O oh Lord, to continue to be in our midst today. Let everything that goes on here this morning glorify your name. Give us understanding into your word. Let it drive out every form of ignorance. At the entrance of today's word will bring light, prosperity, deliverance, and above all, honor your name. Thank you, Lord, for hearing this, our prayer. In Jesus' name, so let's hear a big amen. 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 Let's all be seated. Amen. <laughs> And also, a radi ade tina mirinda wasi yo wa o se me she wo o nyoma e se fa. Are you here this morning? Let me see you. Can you stand so I can see you? If I saw only three of you, they are, they are now on their way. Okay, they take it. Ashama, are you here? Oh, come for Ashama. Ashama, come for it. Quickly. Quickly. an acceptable and there's a perfect will of God for every one of us. Good, acceptable, something that you cannot reject, you cannot refuse. You can only accept it because it's so good. And because it's so perfect, that is the will of God. For every one of us. For every one of us. For God is no respecter of persons. Let me say it again. For each and every one of God's children, there is a good. There is an acceptable 
and a perfect will of God for him or for her, for us. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. So I set the stage, I set the ball rolling by letting you and I also know about this fact. In case you didn't know it before, people always want to know what is the will of God for my life. Everyone in this world would like to know what the will of God is for his or her life. But let it be known to you today that that will of God that you're talking about, that you want to know about, is good, it is acceptable, and it is perfect. And now, how do you get this will of God? Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2. Just one verse. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And if you there, say amen. amen. Romans 12, verse 2. The Bible says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Bible says in this verse that do not be conformed to this world but be transformed, be changed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is that. In other words, the, that will is there. So you can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That will is there. So that, you can, so that you may obtain it, that you can get it, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. The year is fast coming to an end. And I believe that God being a respecter of seasons, every year has a package of blessings for his children. And may you receive all your blessings for this year. Amen. That is how God works. And come 2025, God again ha will have a package of blessings for you in the coming new year. Amen. And may you all receive your blessings in the coming new year. Amen. There's something we call conformation and transformation. And today the title is therefore Conformation and Transformation. Con, C-O-N, Formation. And then Trans, T-R-A-N-S, Formation. Conformation and Transformation. These are very, very important words in theology. In our worship of God, there's what we, we have conformation and transformation. The Bible says that do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Beloved, when we talk of the meaning, when we consider the meaning of conformation, conformation and transformation, these two words convey the idea, there's an idea of changing 
change. There's a change. There's a, there's a, a message of change from one thing to be like the other. In other words, you are in a position where you are conforming to something, but you need to change to be like that, where you can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. We all began life in this world, and we are in this world, but as a Christian, you don't belong to this world. We are only sojourners or strangers and pilgrims. Once you believe in Jesus, you become a stranger. You are a traveler. You are passing through. Pilgrim means that you are just passing through. This world is not your world. It's not, it's not your parquet last stop. You are a pilgrim. You are passing through. You are a stranger. You are a sojourner passing through. Therefore, every one of us begins from the world. You are born into the world. You are born into a worldly family, into a, in, a, in a worldly village, wherever you come from. You are born into a worldly tribe. That's where you begin from. And therefore, you grow up in the world. And therefore, you are one with the world. You begin by being conformed to the world. That's what you know. What you know is conformation to the world. And there are many who stay conformed all their lives. They never are able to change to be like the other. They never get to know what the other is like. They never see, they never get to benefit from what the other can give to them. But see, where the other is, that's where that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God is. Therefore, when you look at verse 1 of chapter 12, Paul said that I beseech you, I beg you, I beseech you therefore, not I beg you, brethren, by the mercies of God, Begging you by God, begging me by God, by the mercies of God. That's how Paul begins. And then he, he, he pleads with you. He begs you, therefore, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. This world, when we say this world in this verse, means the kingdom of Satan. The world means the kingdom of Satan. We are all born into that kingdom. There's nobody who was born a believer. Nobody who was born saved. We are all born right into the middle of the kingdom of Satan. And by the grace of God, it is only by God's grace and his mercies that you have lived to see this day and you shall live to see many days, many, many more days to come. Because God is with you, and he shall continue to be with you. You see, the world, meaning the kingdom of Satan, in it, in this world, Satan has great power. Satan has great power. And he exercises authority in his kingdom. It's a kingdom. He is the king of the world. And therefore, he has power in the world, and he exercises this power and authority over the lives of all those who don't believe in Jesus. Once you don't believe in Jesus, then you are in the kingdom of the world. Therefore, Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus brought in the perfect kingdom. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Nobody can be holy and pleasing to God if he, that person, is conformed to the world. Because once you conform to the world, then you are under the kingdom. You are being ruled. You are being governed by the kingdom of Satan. 
And therefore, we're just about five weeks to the end of the year. It is my prayer and my desire, my thoughts and my goals that each and every one of you shall obtain, prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God for you for this year in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands for Jesus. Hello? Yes. The enemy will like very much that the opposite will happen to us. The enemy, Jesus said, because they hated him, they also hate us. Satan hates God, hates Jesus. The world hates Jesus. And therefore, they hate us. Beloved, you see, no one, nobody can be pleasing. You cannot please God. You cannot be holy if you conform to this world. And let me explain briefly again what conform, conformation means. You see, we are all born into the world. Therefore, you begin from a position of conformation. Only we ask now about the only man. So, if I grew up in the village, when I was growing up, I didn't even know that I was anything called a church. I was I was conformed to the world. What was in the village where, and that's what I, that's how I lived. When we moved to Accra, Osu, how the place was. That's how we lived. Nobody in the in the family went to church. So I never went to church. I was conforming to the world. I was taking part in all the festivals. Taking part in everything that they said, I was taking part. Anything that they did, I, I admired it, I liked it. I, ha, I was conformed to the world. But now, I wanted you to know that there was that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. For don't, don't, don't get this wrong. Hello? Good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for all of you. But it required a transformation. I had to trans, I had to change from that corn, trans to the other side, to be like the other. So I had to receive that thing. And today, may you all undergo transformation in the name of Jesus. Because if we stay conformed, if we stay conformed, and you don't change to be like what God wants you to be, then you may never prove that will of God in your life. When we go to 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. 1 John chapter 2, 15 to 17. First John chapter 2, 15 to 17. The Bible says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world, of the kingdom of Satan. And the world is passing away. Satan's kingdom is passing away. And the last of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. Amen. So, what is it that you love in the world? What is it that you love in the world? To love me, that is something that you crave after, you have a longing for. You do anything to get. You even sacrifice your worship of God to get it. Because you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. You love one and hate the other. So when you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. And what is it you are talking about? Love of the world. 
The last of the eyes, the things you see, beautiful things that you see, beautiful things you see. You want to have that? You want to have this? You want to have a what? The other day I was, uh, I was, I was driving on the motorway. And uh, a, a Range Rover came and passed me at about 300 miles per hour. She on the motorway, I look at the number, Obinim 1. <laughs> Have you seen his vehicles? His name is on it. The number plate, Obinim 1, 2, 3, 4, because he's the vehicle. Obinim 1. Hey, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. If this is one, then what will happen to what, I want to see the, what 10 is like. He's a man of, he says he's a man of God. And he's driving about 300 miles per hour on the motorway. Be, of course, there are beautiful things. Beautiful things. But God knows the things that you have need of. The things that you need. And you supply them. May God supply all your needs. According to his glory or his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. The last of the eyes, the last of the flesh, and the pride of life, the pride of life, it is possible. <laughs> Hello? Oh, is it, is it possible? It's possible. Yeah. possible, yeah, possible. After, after being there for eight years, now I think that it's possible. I feel the baby. You know, if I were if I were I've been there for eight years, I'll just quietly, I'll just go and sit my somewhere. <laughs> Let somebody also come here and try and hear. I was a Ghana until we get a female president, not a Kadonko, until we get a female president. What do you need a female president? I don't know how you <laughs> hello. Praise the Lord. Carola, may you be the next president of Ghana. May the next female president come from SCAC. Hello? If you agree with me, clap for Jesus. I would love to see, you know, wouldn't it be nice to see, you see my daughter Angel being the first female president of Ghana. Ah, Ghana, yeah, yeah. Hello? I would say, is it possible? Is it possible? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the pride of life. Pride of life. And I, I know I, I told my wife, look, I mean, it goes at a time when we've, we have our house and we have uh, two plots of land. Uh, it's enough. Even if I have money, I'm not going to buy any more land. We have uh, our house, we have land at uh, 25, and uh, we are a farm. Even if I have one million, I'm not going to buy any more land. And now, and yeah, I don't cry, I don't cry. So, do you agree with me? Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to buy land, land here. You know, I mean, what do you call him for? Can you buy the whole world? You alone, if you have three plus of land, you alone. If Ghana, everybody was to have three plus, Ghana would not be big enough for everybody else. So if you have one, two, three, it's enough. Praise the Lord. Let your children also come and get their own land. So do you agree with me? Yes. Clap your hand for Jesus then. <laughs> Hello? So do not conform to the world. What the world like? What the, how they fight and don't be like that. Don't be like you know, you know. Be, be content. I'm not saying stream bad, but when you bought one, two, three, maybe four, and you say it's enough now. Stop and begin to develop them. Build upon them. Build up. Wall them. Put a fence wall. Put a gate to secure them. After all, can you sleep in ten bedrooms every night? Is it not one bed and one bed that you sleep on? So, you know, here we are seeing you. What at all are you after? Hello? And when we, when we go to, isn't there, isn't there a mansion waiting for you in heaven? So what is the mansion here in Accra or Tema? I count it all as rubbish. Amen. Oh. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4, 22-24. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 24. Now, this is a person who is conformed to this world. We're going to look a bit briefly about the person 
who is conformed. What the Bible says about first in Ephesians 2, verse 22 said, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Let me take it again. Verse 22 says, that you put off, no, that they're talking to a person who is conformed to this world, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man, put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. What the Bible is saying here that God created us in a certain way, in a certain manner to be what he wants us to be. And when you are able to transform from the world to how God wants you to be, that's when you now begin to receive that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And the way to do that is, he said, put on the old man, how you were before. Put it off. And once you decide to do it, God will help you. And may God help us all. The old man grows corrupt. You see, if you stay in the old man for too long, the reason why, and I've noticed that many, many years now, the reason why many people, when they reach a certain age, when they become 40, 45, 50 years old, they cannot accept the charismatic doctrine. They cannot. They cannot. I've had many middle-aged, elderly people come to the church from Web Miracle Church to FCAC, and even to dance is a problem for them. They have never danced in a church before. When you say dance, they just walk around like this. That is, they are dancing. They are not able to say, Elder, me what? They are from Web Miracle Company for Abba. They can't stay. I can list my notes. Because see, when you stay conformed the way for too long, the Bible says, then the, you grow corrupt. You grow corrupt. Corrupt. Uh, by, by, the, by the deceitful lust, you grow corrupt. You get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Now to come out becomes very difficult. To come out becomes very difficult. So don't stay conformed for too long. Now, you have to get up the loins of your mind. Renew that mind and get transformed to the other thing, where God wants you to be. Where God wants you to be. And then when you have done that, and it's not difficult, if only you, 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 you make up your mind that I will do this, this is how I'm going to do it, is the mind. We're going to look at the mind very soon. If only you can say, resolve, take a, a, a decision, and abide by that decision, after a while it becomes normal. Hello? Hallelujah. The mind here, the mind refers to a person's soul. That part of your soul, the soul is made up of the, the mind, the intellect, and your emotions. Hello? The, 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 the soul is made up of your mind, your intellect, and your emotions. And the mind is the place where all thoughts, all desires, and all goals come from. Your mind is where all your thoughts that's where all that is. 
Just say your thoughts. Say desires and goals. And the mind is a very interesting place. Because see, this same mind is where all sinful thoughts come from. All sinful thoughts come from. The same time, this mind, the same mind is where all the holy thoughts come from. All the holy thoughts. Same place. But it's up to you in renewing your mind, getting rid of the old man, sinful thoughts, and then fill your mind with meditating on things that are noble, things that are pure, things that are good, things that are of good report. Meditate on these things day and night. Hello? Praise the Lord. Clap your hands for Jesus. The mind is a very, very um, dangerous place. In the kind of, if you don't handle the mind very well, you can stay conformed. But if you handle the mind very, very well, you stay transformed. When you are conformed, you say you are unregenerate, you are raw, you are raw material, unregenerate. You are like raw material, unprocessed. You say you are unregenerate, unregenerate, and that is a very, very bad state to be in. But when you renew your mind, you become regenerate. You become like a final product, refined product, gold, silver, good for the master's use. Therefore, church, transformation from the old self to the new self can only happen by the renewing of your mind from the old mind to the new mind. Hello? Let me give you an example. Practical example. This morning, for example, or even yesterday, I believe that yesterday we all think, oh, tomorrow what am I going to do? Tomorrow is Sunday, 24th of what month? November. What am I going to do? What is my program for? Those who have thought of it about one, uh, about one week ago, but let's say we are thinking of it that yesterday. What am I going to do? Using your mind. We have many things that we can do. Oh, tomorrow, oh, 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, church. Ashaman, Michel Camp, Tema. Joint, um, joint service, Tema. Um, at the same time, we could try job where I can go and do this job here. Fast one. We need some 500 CDs. Is that not right? Well, maybe I just want to rest. My bread. I saw let me call last week. I was in church last week. So if I don't go today, Pastor will even notice that I was not there today. So, though God may see it, but God will forgive me. It's Pastor I'm afraid of, not God. So a whole lot of things are happening. Or you may decide to go for what, Sunday morning, what, Omutu. You have been invited. Many things. Which one do you choose? Julie, which one would you choose? You choose one. Church. That's why you are here today, so I know that you choose this one. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Abib, which one would you choose? You are here, so if you say you are here, I believe you. Who is not here that you know of? Anybody who is not here right now? Anybody who is not here today? Tell me who is not here today. And we'll call that person. Are we, so are we all here this morning? So who do you know who is not here today? Why not Mane? I don't know. Can you name anybody? Or you don't want to, you don't want to be seen as now. When I better report to them, they say when when the boy with you, I saw you. I said, when the boy with you, hello. Yeah. Once you know them, that's enough. Praise the Lord. So you can see the mind is working. The mind goes to sleep only when you sleep, and even then, there are some of us when we see the mind is still working. That's when we see angels. May you see angels when you are sleeping. Yeah. Hello. May you see scriptures when you are asleep. Amen. May you never, 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 never see coffins and snakes when you are asleep. 
In the name of Jesus. You know, when, when, you, when, you, when, you see, when you see angels, you don't go and tell me. You don't tell me that you saw angels, that you saw scripture. But when you see the head of a cockroach, you come running to me, Pastor, I die, Hello? So now you are transformed. Church, are you transformed now? Is your mind renewed now? Now, stay transformed. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1. 13 to 16. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 to 16. This is for now having been transformed, how to stay transformed. 1 Peter 1, 13 to 16. He says, therefore, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 to 16. Therefore, get up the loins of your mind be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourself to the former lust, as in your ignorance, but as he who, who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. The Bible said that, look, having been transformed, to stay transformed, what you have to do is to get up the loins of your mind. Control your mind. Hello? Control your mind. Just say, control your mind. Say, I'll control my mind. Get up the loins. You know, when I, you know the loin is the waist. The waist is where you, you, we the men, that's where we hang our trousers. If you don't tighten your belt, hang, your trousers will fall off. Before I come to the church, before I come here in the morning, I, I look at my belt and I tighten it. So when I'm preaching, my trousers will not fall off. <laughs> Hello? So say, when you say, get out the loins of your mind, it means that tighten your mind, control your mind. Control your, don't let other people control you. You control your mind. Let not somebody's mind control your mind. Be sober. Be winning. Don't wait until calamity comes before you begin to look for solutions. Be sober. Be sober. Don't just take things for granted. Don't take anything for granted. But we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. So apart from guiding up the loss of your mind, controlling your mind, be sober, be wise, be, be vigilant. Anything, decision, weigh that decision. Weigh that decision before you take that action. Weigh the decision before you take that action. Then he said, rest your hope. You must have hope. If you don't have hope, you're wondering. Rest your hope fully, just say fully, upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Rest your hope, grace brought to me. Beloved, I have worked in, I've been, I've been, this is my 40, 44 years now since I qualified as a doctor. 44 years now. And I've seen many children born. They all cry. They all cry when, when they are born. And I know that Corey says that's why they can sing. They cried with a very good voice when they were born. They all cry. But everybody also will die. So now, once you're in this world, think of life after death. Life will not end with your death. And I see people when they are about to die, church, I know it. When they are dying, when they are gasping, you say gasping. You know where their breath is, like, they are taking their last breath. When we say gasping, we give oxygen, oxygen doesn't, it doesn't work. There are some fear come, come over their faces. Fear. Because at that time, they begin to see where they are going to. And where they are now begin to fade. The world begin to fade. We ask, oh, no, one, I say, I say, new place be, is opening up. There are some who fear 
the new place. Others begin to smile. And may you smile when your time comes. Amen. Don't think that your time will never come. It will come. I know my, I wish mine will come. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm hard flat between the two. <laughs> to be with the Lord, <laughs> which by, by far, I'm not by far, I'm not by far, I'm not by far, I'm not by far better than Tema here. But for your sake, hello? They, they smile. And some peace comes over their faces and they die peacefully in the name of Jesus. Amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. So rest your hope. Don't put your hope in money. Don't put your hope in positions. Don't put your hope in, 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 in what? In, in uh, be, become a celebrity well-known. I could very well be a well-known pastor if I wanted to. All I have to do is to go to the press. Do you know I can go to the press? Yes, get some press men, invite them here, give them money. They come and take, look at me, do administration, I go to what GBC, I go to Angel TV, I go to what Demons TV, I go where? <laughs> they show and say, hey, Prophet be a peer whatever. And no, I don't know about The press will write something about me. Hey, this man, we have not seen any man who is anointed like you. We get deliverance like like say say so. We be on fire here and court. I have all the cripples are walking. The blind are seeing. This place will fall. Oh, but when you come here, do what I'll do. If you just can't, they'll say, oh, suffer from there. So you see, Pastor John first. Now, how much a thousand cities? Now, I'll pass now, my elder. Now, I'll go there, 5,000. But before you come to see, you know, if you have 10,000. You better not wear, yes, sir. Yes, 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 Pastor. Yes, Pastor. If you have 10,000. Hello? Bible says, freely have we received and freely must we give. Hello? And if when they get a deliverance, they'll go and waste it on their own pleasure. They'll get their deliverance. Because they're anointing, they'll get delivered. But they'll go and waste it on their own pleasure. They are not even saved. I'll be wasting my time. I was not called for that. God did not call me for that. Hello? And I've said that even if the president, president wants to worship with us, if Nana Adudankwa, Nana Akufu is that, is that right? Nana Adudankwa, Nana, how many Nanas are in the name? Two. Only one. Nana Adudankwa, Nana Akufuado. If he wants to, if he says he wants to worship with us, we will give him our conditions. Uba had no security. Uba Uba is sad. We're born with Sam. What if you are in the soul? So what do you mean you will see here? Go somewhere else. Hello? Yeah, do you agree with me? Yes. Oh, do you agree with me? Oh, yes, whatever. In Jesus' name, shall say amen. So first Peter 1 13 says, Therefore, get out the lungs of your mind, be sober. Rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to, to be brought to you. The revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourself to the former lust. As in your ignorance, you are ignorant. You are ignorant. You were ignorant. I was talking to somebody, I think, two weeks ago, and I had a person, the person is in the Presbyterian Church. And I said, well, Have you been Holy Ghost baptized? He said, Yes. Are you Holy Ghost baptized? He said, Yes. I said, How was it done? Because I know Presby, they don't do Holy Ghost baptism. So I said, how was it? And I said, oh, pastor, the pastor brought a small bowl of water. Holy Ghost baptism. And then they make you kneel down, then they sprinkle it on your top, top of your head. Is that Holy Ghost baptism? Is that, is that even water baptism? I don't know of any baptism like that. Elder, do you know of any baptism where they sprinkle water on, on your head? No. It's not a Holy Ghost or water baptism. But this person doesn't even know the difference between Holy Ghost and water baptism. How much, how much like to know how the baptism is done? So there are times when we're all ignorant. It's not, it's not his fault. He's living in ignorance. We are all living in the ignorance. But now, shall I say, but now? But now. Say, but now. but now. But now you know. <laughs> Don't you know? 
Now, if any of you should find yourself in any church, say in Asaman Kesi or Asaman Ketua or whatever, when you go and they see, they see what you know, they immediately make you a bishop. Do you agree with me? They make you, I know that I said, well, when she left here, went to a church, he said, okay, when you now heaven. When Chasata left here, you know Chasata, I saw him, and then passed at once. Then the pastor immediately. Pastor Charles, Pastor Charles, Pastor Charles, Pastor Charles. Is it Governor and Bishop Charles? Because of what you know, church, now you are no longer ignorant. So don't let the devil deceive you. If you know and you set aside that knowledge, you set it aside, it's a very serious sin. Very serious sin. May you therefore remain transformed Amen. in the name of Jesus. Because there's that good, that acceptable, and that perfect will of God waiting for you. Strong-minded, focus. Be sober and vigilant. Rest your hope on Jesus Christ. As obedient children, be careful not to conform yourself to former lusts when you live in ignorance. Now, finally, there shall be another transformation. Finally. And for this, let's go to Philippians 3. Philippians 3, 2021. Philippians 3, 20 and 21. Philippians 3, 20 and 21. If you there, say amen. The Bible says here in Philippians 3, verse 20, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform, just say transform, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Wonderful. <laughs> now, when Christ comes, there shall be a combination of transformation and conformation. Now, the two shall be, the two shall happen. But it will happen to us, but not the mind. This transformation is not the mind. Hello, Rebecca. This transformation will not be the mind. It will, it will first the body. Bible says your body is uh, lowly. Lowly. L O W L Y. A uh, low. Human body, no, a uh, low cry. Hello? Praise the Lord. And that's why I see God knowing that after the fall, before the fall, our bodies were glorious. After the fall, we saw that we were naked. So now God in his, in, made tunics of animal skin and clothed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. God clothed them. And that tunic now made them look beautiful. And that's why right now, when I look at, today I saw a deaconess, deaconess, and then the one of the one of the from. It's not, let me see you. Who's that? I never let me see you. I saw her, I said, hey, look at, I never. All right, the whole of the so I can Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God has made it possible for us to clothe ourselves, to hide our lowly body. So we all look beautiful. When we add our white whitey, and yefe. Yefe. You want to say, wow, I would like to have one of these. Yefe, Papa. I won't talk about my own, my wife's own wife for that one. You say, you say I'm being biased, so I, won't, I, do, I won't talk about it yet. Praise the Lord. Though. My Bible says, a man of God, Jesus, but transform your lowly body, you no, know, lowly body, into, into his glorious body, to be like his glorious body. Church, who pay now, pay the Who pay now, pay the and if you don't rest your hope on this, then you cannot endure. You can't persevere. If you rest your hope, everything here in this world, 
You cannot endure. You can't persevere. You fall by the wayside. And then when they are done that, then we shall be transformed. Now, we shall be transformed. So we shall be, con- we shall be conformed, sorry. We shall be conformed into his glorious body. A whole, any final one. That's the final one. And that's where Jesus wants you and me to be like, clap your hand for Jesus. So as the year hurtles to an end, my prayer, my hope, my desire, my goals, my thoughts. Last night of prayer, I was meditating and praying for all of you. Everybody in FCAC. I hardly pray for myself now. What am I praying for? Am I, am I praying for land? Am I, am I praying for land? Hello? Am I praying for children? Oh, yes or no? For myself? No. Am I now going to pray for a wife? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Am I praying for what? To travel outside? Or to go and live in Canada? What, 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 give me the whole Canada of Carmen Pe. So when I said I'm going to pray, what do I pray for? Who do I pray for? You. Hello? I pray for Kate. I pray for Christy. I pray for Joseph. I pray for your faces kept coming. Everybody. Pray for Manuela, Augustina, and I pray for Mawuli. Mawuli, I only pray for half a prayer for him, half. <laughs> I pray for just you. Not about 12.30 to 1 a.m. Well, I'll say this morning then. Because all my thoughts my desires and my goals. As far as I'm concerned, here in this world, the Lord has fulfilled them all. The only thing I pray for is that ministry. The Lord will use SCAC to bless many, many, not just in Ghana, but wherever the Lord will want SCAC to go to. The Lord will bless many genuine believers, not crowd, not just crowd, genuine, faithful believers, saved. Pray for everybody. I pray for Men, you know, let me when I pray for Enoch, I pray for Perry, I pray for Julius, pray for Solomon. There are not many men here, so men the more you are in check one is here, I move on to a women. <laughs> pray for everybody. Then when I when I when I get that release, I know that God has heard my prayer, Amen. and therefore God will bless every one of you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Clap your hand for Jesus. Beloved, don't forget, if you want to do the perfect will of God, the will of God for you, I want to do the will of God for my life. It's a good, acceptable, and perfect will. But God will not show it to you or give it to you until that transformation through the renewing of, your, of the mind turns you into the other. And then you begin to realize it one by one. It will not happen. At, if it all happens one at once, you can't endure. You can't take it. So one by one, one by one, one by one, two by two. But it will all come to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hand for Jesus.